Welcome to On The Move. We are Matt and Betsy, and we are on a journey to relocate our family from Ontario to Prince Edward Island, Canada. Mm -hmm. And today we are out in our yard, maybe one more time or one of a few more times because it's beautiful out here, the weather's warmed up, and we're, we're feeling like it's summer. It's a little bit humid for me, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny, around the Great Lakes here, we, we've we always yes. lived around this area, so we've always lived with humidity. Um, I think on the ocean, we probably will deal with humidity, too. I, I'm curious to find out, because I definitely melt. Humidity is not my friend. Yeah. I like it to be about 20 degrees all the time with zero humidity, and that happens for about a week <laughs> in the spring yeah. and maybe two weeks in the fall. Yeah, so. yeah. Our, yeah. Our eldest daughter is the same way. She melts. Yeah, we... Lived, I lived my entire life without air conditioning until we had her. She was born in April, and by June, you came home one day after work, and you said, that's it, we need air. Yeah. Because I was cranky, she oh. was cranky, and we've had air conditioning ever since. We have noticed that a lot of the houses out there don't seem to yeah. indicate that they have air conditioning, so it'll be an adventure to find mm -hmm. out whether yeah. we think it's needed or not. We're told it's windy and breezy, yeah, so that, I'm, that seems to be consistent. Yeah. So, and I do, I do fine as long as there's a bit of air movement. Um, I feel okay tonight. It is perfectly still and sticky. So. Yeah, which is rare. <laughs> I guess that's part of the reason it's sticky because of the heavy it's fully heat. Fully still. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Canada and weather always something we, to talk about. <laughs> always Canadian. You know that if you're Canadian, <laughs> the first thing we're going to talk about is weather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Well. I, I, I'm excited because last week I talked about maybe a truck tour, and and we had some good response on that. Yeah. So I went ahead and did a truck tour. So I think we're going to insert that in right here um, so that you can see a little bit about the truck that mm -hmm. we plan to use for this whole adventure and trailer yeah. and that type of thing. Enjoy. All right. For those of you who care about the numbers and the letters, this is a 2011 XLT XTR 4x4. Ford F-150, and I'll give you some reasons why I went with this truck as opposed to one that was maybe a different model or a little bit new newer. So one of the reasons is that this is the 3.5 liter EcoBoost version of the engine, and interestingly enough, I learned that it has more power to it and it can tow more than some of the bigger engines. It's better than the 5 liter uh, engine, which this is a V6 and that's a, a V8. So I was definitely looking for that in here. And this also has a great tow package to it. Some of the stuff that I was really looking at when trying to find um, a vehicle was I found that the Carfax was really handy to tell me some of the history to it, as well as uh, the window sticker, which they often these days will post with it, or you can get it from Ford as well. So the window sticker here tells me things like, I know it has the max tow package on it, which means that it can uh, do, when they do the commercials and they talk about, oh, it can haul 11,000 pounds or you see it towing an airplane. Well, it has to have that stuff on it, I learned, in order to do that. And this vehicle has that. And the Carfax also told me that this vehicle was really well cared for. You could see the maintenance schedule and they had done a number of rust proofing treatments on it, which meant that it was in better condition underneath than some of the newer stuff that I looked at too. So I really, really liked the way that it was taken care of. And I hope to keep that up so that it's in good shape. And if you come in here, you can see one of the other important things for me that I was always looking for was whether it had an electronic brake controller, either one that had been attached or one that was integrated in like this. Um, th this was a learning curve for me, understanding that you need to have control of the brakes on the, um, on the trailer as well. So it, this allows me to do that, and I'm still learning some of that. And the people we brought bought the trailer from, they're going to help with some of that too. So probably more of that will come later as well. This is the cab. It has more bells and whistles than we probably need in it. This is the first vehicle that we have that actually has um, sync technology so that our phones can sync in. We're probably not going to use it as much as some people do there as well. And um, the electronic change from two-wheel to four-wheel drive. Interestingly enough, with these vehicles, 
Um, when you go to a four-wheel drive vehicle, your towing capacity actually goes down because of the extra equipment that goes into making it four-wheel drive. But we decided that was still important for Betsy for safety uh, if we, as we talked about, some of those unpredictable winter conditions too. So the back of it, this was for the girls, the Super Crew model. So this has more room than basically anything we've had before back here. Uh, the seats do lift up too, but the girls, they can have lots of leg room as they grow as well in there. And then as we go to the back, oh, this was a little bonus on top. Betsy liked the fact that it had a cover for the top that uh, keeps things safe inside and dry. And this is not actually the first model I looked at that had this. This is like this faux carpet liner in here. They call it a bed rug. We're not so sure whether it's a good thing or not for us, but um, we'll find out, I guess. And then also with that too, the, the guy who sold me the truck was super excited about the fact that it has this step here. I didn't think it was anything special, but um, our oldest daughter at least likes it to get in and out. She's already been using this for a variety of things. We did. We decided to put a blanket in and we did ice cream one day. We took the truck and sat in the back and had ice cream. And then we also had a rainy day where we took the truck into the garage and she sat in the back and had a socially distanced meeting with one of her friends. I don't know if that was interesting for most people. Like for me, it was interesting details. But well, you had at least two specific requests. So that's, yeah. we've kept two people happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> And on, on requests, a lot of people, the common question we get these days beyond the, uh, the basics of, oh, you're moving, why are you doing that sort of yeah. thing is, well, when, when, are you going? Yeah, when can you do that? Can you do that? Are you allowed to enter the province? And we did do some specific looking. It actually is related to some home hunting we'll talk about mm -hmm. a little bit later. And we yeah. discovered uh, that there is five steps that PEI has put together. Okay. Yeah. And this is the first time hearing them, too. Five, five sounds like a lot. The, the first step officially started June 6th. And okay. well, for us, what matters is, I think, step four. Okay. At least, I mean, we can probably enter with jumping through hoops anywhere in the process. Okay. But uh, step four seems to be the most favorable. So when we're looking, we're starting to think more about sort of August 8th, August 9th, which is their estimated date for, for step four. And at that point, we will have one or two scenarios. Either we'll have had our second vaccine, and, <laughs> and then at that point, there'll be uh, no, no quarantine period when we yes. enter the province. Yeah. Or if we only have one vaccine, I think we have to get tested when we get there. And okay. then if it comes back negative, then that cancels like out whatever those quarantine. those rapid tests? Yeah. Okay. So it's like a, a yeah. day or two. And then, okay. uh, yeah, I don't think we get it like right away. Right. I think we have to quarantine for a day a or two. A couple of days. Okay. But that's better than 14 days. Yes. When Especially we when we don't know a lot of people, anyone on the island, who we would really be comfortable like asking to take care of us for yeah. two weeks, like groceries and, and all that. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More than the, the quarantine, the challenge for me is who am I going to look to and ask to help us? Yeah, we, <laughs> so, we know some friends of friends that we could maybe draw maybe, on, but, but it that, feels early that would be, to... <laughs> yeah, for us, that's a, that's a big step. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how that all pans out. Yeah. yeah. So even though our house closes here on July 7th, um, we are planning to be still in Ontario for at least the month of July. Um, we have a plan of what we're going to do with that too. Are Makes we, the grandparents happy. Yeah. Are we sharing that? At sure. This point? Okay, yeah. so we have bought a trailer, yay, which we're excited about. Um, so it gives us a place to have as our home for the summer. So we thankfully, Matthew's parents live out in the country, so they have a nice big laneway that we can park there. So we're going to do that. And then my family has a trailer parked at a trailer park about 10 minutes from there, which is fantastic because I believe we just got word today or yesterday. This is, yeah. Anyway, in the last this couple week, of days, yeah. letting us know that campgrounds will in fact be open. So my parents can be there. We can be at Matthew's. We can meet in the middle and, and spend some time together before we're out of province. Yeah, that'll it'll make, make, it'll make everyone, the grandparents happy. Yeah, make everyone feel a little bit more 
yeah. like they've seen us because mm-hmm. we've spent the last year really without seeing each other. Yeah, no realized, birthdays, no Christmas, yeah. no Thanksgiving, no Easter. Yeah. Um, we so realized nice. that with your family, we hadn't been to, to their home in, in almost a year. Like it yeah. had probably been last July yeah. that we had been there. So that, that was unusual. I mean, yeah. it's an unusual time, but yes, we recognize yeah. that. So just recently with a little bit of the lessening and being able to be five people together, we have actually been able to, to see, see some family, just a few. Yeah. 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 So we were able to see my parents and my sister. Um, So for my daughters, that's their Nana and Pops and their aunt, um, which they were delighted. Oh, (laughs) most delighted to meet my sister's new cat. (laughs) So our youngest was pretty over the moon to to meet this. Matthew has quite significant cat allergies, so we are not a cat home. We will not be a cat home, but they are cute. They are incredibly entertaining, and we were delighted to go meet our nephew cat. (laughs) Sure. I call it our nephew Mm -hmm. dog on the other side. (laughs) So does that, for highs and lows, is that That was definitely a high. So, And not only did we get to see my family, we also got to go see your family, our children's grandma and grandpa, Mm -hmm. um, and they were delighted just to see them again and just to... To be able to be in close proximity, have conversation, share some game time with grandma, some conversation with grandpa, and of course, grandpa's infamous M&M candy dispensers. <laughs> it wouldn't yeah. be grandpa's house if he didn't have his M&M dispensers sure, filled. Like lined up on a shelf. On a shelf. They, I don't yeah. think they actually contain M&Ms anymore. They're like various candies. Yeah. They don't care. No. <laughs> at least one of them at M and M's. Yeah. Anyway, so they were just happy to go and do those familiar things and see those people who they love and they have missed, and were able to spend um, just kind of a a reintroduction to face to face. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of the other highs for me is the fact that just this week um, past, I've seen jobs start to come online, yes. um, external postings for teaching. Mm-hmm. So I've actually applied for two. Um, that's really fresh news. So I haven't heard anything back yet. I mean, I'm qualified. One of them is a music position. Um, they're all kind of weird contracts. They're like halftime or 62%. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you know teaching at all, you to get your foot in the door, sometimes you have to take Take those kind of odd contracts first. So it's, it's just nice to have those opportunities out there and some, a little bit of hope. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And I keep seeing them come online too. So I'm hopeful that there'll be some more, too, that we can look into as well. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. I hear, I don't know if you'll be able to hear this on here, but we've got weed whacking going on back here. One of the things that you hope for getting out of the city. So, (laughs) talking about that one week in the spring and the one week in the fall that it's 20 degrees and lovely and we can open the windows... I open the windows, and five minutes later, we have industrial landscaping companies showing up all over my neighborhood that run, it feels like, endlessly. So I know in the grand scheme of the world and what goes on, this is minor Minor. issues. First world problem. Yeah, absolutely. Um, But still, so if you're hearing weed whackers right now, it's just part of life here that we are hoping may lessen a little bit elsewhere. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in the way of lows, Mm. for me, I'm always on the practical side of things. Um, You know how we talked last week, we had two things break on us. We're hoping the third was just a broken light bulb. (laughs) No, not so much. We're even three. I think we've carried on. No, we've carried on. It's not not in threes. It's now in fours. I've just given up knowing what it might be. So after the the stove and the table, it's now the, the dryer, dryer yeah. quit. And we, we talked to our real estate engineer. We were like, do we have to replace this? Can, what can we do? Do we talk to the new owners? And she, eventually the, the conclusion, conclusion is, was just yeah. the easiest thing yeah, was to replace, need to replace it. it. Or yep. she said first, well, dryers are really simple. Can you fix it? <laughs> Well, like I said, I do like to fix things, so, so I pulled we, it apart. We took the back off, and we stared at it, yeah. and we wiggled some wires. It, and not, none I, of the major components seemed no. to be broken, so and it had I to be wiring. I spun the drum manually yeah. and went, we have no, no idea, idea what we're looking at here. So yeah. we just gave up and, yeah. and replaced it. However, replaced it. interestingly enough, that low gave me one of my little ups for the highs for the week. So... 
the day it had happened, of course, you don't discover it until you go to put stuff in the dryer. So now you have wet clothing and it needs to be dried and you can't leave wet clothing sit around. So Matthew very sweetly went out and used his good old climbing rope to string me a line in the backyard and I was able to hang up wash. And now I've carried on because I love wash that can be hung out in the fresh air and it's been delightful. I haven't made a particular habit of it in London because when we first moved to London, I'm fairly certain we weren't yeah. allowed. Yeah, it was actually a city, a city bylaw, by no hanging out yeah. laundry. That has just, changed. That has, yes. Yeah. yeah, you can. Just one of those things of, of a city bylaw. Anyway, so I never got into the habit, um, but I've been enjoying it. And I've now done several loads of wash this week that I've hung out. But now, as a true Canadian, with my laundry hanging out, I have to pay a close attention to the the weather. Yeah, we're back to the so weather. we were out doing an errand and it started sprinkling and suddenly I'm going, oh, there's wash on the line and I'm like, I sound like my mother. Anyway, it was a delightful yeah. moment of nostalgia and fresh air and mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. all good. Yeah, well, and so the breaking moves on from Continued. that. Continued. And now, as the na- I don't know when it was, a couple of days later, you come yeah. to me and the oh. exhaust fan in <laughs> the bathroom. I had to take a shower and the fan wouldn't turn on. Stop working. And I thought, oh, maybe it's just loose wires. Mm-hmm. Once it had kind of rattled loose and I had to fix wires and that, I got up there. Now, this one you knew a little bit more about. Cause well, because I installed that installed fan. It. So maybe that's yeah. actually on me. My oh. problem. <laughs> no, I think I no. think we just ran it pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah. And so pretty sure the motor died on it. Yeah. So I'm in the process of fixing that as well. It, I haven't replaced and fixed so many things in the last five years, other oh. than the first year we moved in when we yeah. updated stuff. We should probably say, though, the appliances and things that have been falling apart did come with the house. Yeah. It's not like these were brand new appliances, so they really probably were on their last legs. And mm-hmm. we live pretty hard with the number of people that we've had through the house. You can imagine how much laundry I'm doing, how many showers are being taken in a day. So... Where we live, we use. So things were just, just reached the end of their life. So although a little bit disheartening, we also are like, okay, we understand why it broke down. So replace it, move on. That's the name of the game right now. Yep. Probably the biggest piece of drama for us this past week was a house that came on the market. And it was... It was a good house, and actually we had an in on it as well because it was being sold by our real estate agent, which we flipped back and forth on whether that was a good well, thing or not. I still don't know. Not. I still, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, we got to see it first yeah. out yeah. of everyone, and yeah. we, we knew a lot about it, which probably helped us in putting yeah. a bid on it. Yeah. But it didn't happen. No. Nope. <laughs> there, it was, it was a, a house that uh, it was a great piece of property. Yeah. And in town, in, t- in, in town, town yeah. which for us, that wasn't a huge priority. Yeah. If you've watched before, you know, we actually might like to be in the country. country yeah. Um, so that wasn't big for us. But up for other people, I think it was. And somebody yeah. came in and clearly this was the house for them it. because <laughs> they went way over and above for that place. Yeah. So, so, it's, so that's OK. So, yeah. again, we, we said, all right. That's yeah. fine. It's not for us. Yeah. Even the night before, I had said, you know what? Yeah. Because we had to, we put our offer in. We had to wait till the next day, day to find, find out, out what was going to happen with it. And I said, you know, if this doesn't happen, I'm okay. We got lots of things on the go right now. We got lots of good plans. Yeah. If this doesn't happen, we'll be okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was I was sad for a few minutes just because there is no way that I can put an offer on a house and not somewhat have my heart set on it. Otherwise, yeah. I wouldn't be putting yeah. an offer on it. You were already starting so, to map things out. Already, You'd made yeah. a fun little family connection with uh, a friend, friend who worked yeah. fairly close by Fine, or a friend like of your yep. brother. I love making connections. So we had started doing that already. And you just, you know, I hadn't really started putting paint on the walls. But in my mind, I was fixing up. The, anyway, it wasn't meant to be. So now we've just had to let it go. And wish those people all the best and hope Mm -hmm. that it is a happy home for them. And know that ours is still out there waiting for us somewhere on (laughs) PEI. Yeah, it's out there. It might not, like, you keep thinking, oh, it's going to be tomorrow, it's going to be tomorrow. But it it, it might not be for a little while now. I know. That's a bit of, um, that's trying. Because you want to watch realtor.ca even though we're set up in the system and our real estate agent has assured us if anything comes within our range within our area it will come through to our email I just can't help looking 
every day at what else might just might might just be there and what yeah. I might just have I don't know that somehow yeah. the algorithm maybe we'll find something that it missed and oh this could actually work for us yeah. if we did this within this you're always thinking that so I'm trying really hard not to spend as many times a day checking Realtor.ca because it was getting ridiculous. So I am delighted to say that with um, less younger kids around, I had a, a knitted sweater that I'd attempted several times. Three and times. I, <laughs> I have finally got it off and going. So it's called the Unbearable Hoodie for all you Here, people who I'll, actually, I'll this actually is, this watch. This is what they do on these, things, right? on these knitting shows, yeah. yeah. Um, I do watch knitting podcasts. I won't turn this one into one. Um, so little bears, this is the yoke, all in one piece, top down. Um, and it's going to be beautiful. I love it. It's soft. It's already it's beautiful. cushy. The yarn might have been shipped here from Amsterdam. Uh, Stephen West, Stephen and Penelope, for those who actually know. Anyway, it's delightful. I love the colors. Even my daughters have come by and said, ooh, mom, nice pink. And we've already discussed the whole pink thing. So yeah. just that is what gives me some mental sanity some it gives us all mental sanity when she's <laughs> saying the rest of us are more sane in this house it helps so and yeah. just something to feed my creativity and start bringing it back around um are we ready to kind of move into our next section of, what's, of next? what's next yeah. all right so what's next is still waiting on the house but it really is a lot of waiting and i can't really pack up a whole lot more because now we're waiting for the trailer to come so Part of my plan is that I will not be purchasing stuff to outfit a trailer. I will simply take our items that we live with every day here and transfer them into the trailer. So I can't pack up a whole lot more until the trailer has arrived and I'm able to organize what I'm going to put in there for use there for the month and what will actually get packed up and go in a storage crate. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really just waiting because that's not going to happen for a couple of weeks, but I'm also continuing to decompress. So being a carer 24 seven, a 24 seven carer, anyone who knows what that's like, who maybe does that for a parent, for children, um, for someone else in their life, it really can be quite all consuming. And I often don't recognize how intense it is until I come out of it and I have to kind of go through this decompressing phase and Matthew has talked about it before with me but I don't always recognize it so often for the first week or two I'm just really tired and that is exactly what happened once again I remember one time we had a little guy leave we went on a cruise and sadly I slept through pretty much all of the fun nightlife on a cruise because yeah, <laughs> like I was exhausted. At least the two thirds of it, you were. I was out by almost 7 p.m. every yeah, night. You were just you recovering. Yeah, my body right. just has to recover. Now that mm -hmm. was also because it was a non-sleeping infant, so yeah. physically exhausted, but just not realizing the the amount of exhaustion that comes with that. So the first couple of weeks, I'm decompressing. I'm just letting my body recover. Um, and then I start to kind of come through it. And the next week I'm often just thinking a lot about them and throughout the day, oh, I wonder what they're doing right now because I'm still mentally in the routine of what I would have been while caring for them. And now we're just starting to come back into where I feel like I'm starting to have my own thoughts again, if that kind of makes sense to anyone, um, that I can actually start thinking about other topics that are not 100% caring based. Um, so it can be anywhere for me from creative design to philosophy, to theology, <laughs> to just about my pets. Um, but it's just a nice feeling to start feeling like I'm sort of getting in touch with myself again. So yeah. I have some dreams about some things I do want to get back into some creative pursuits, but I'm still recovering and I need to allow my my mind the time it needs to recover from that if I try to push it like all things it it just becomes frustrating and painful so that's where I'm at right now I'm yeah. just starting to come back into my yeah. creativity I just keep going with details so yeah. <laughs> we're getting to the point now where actually some of these details do matter I've started doing some looking into how we're going to actually move stuff not mm. the stuff that comes with us in our trailer we've right. bought but all the other things that don't make sense, like a kitchen table yeah. doesn't make sense. We have one particularly nice couch we bought a little while ago yes. we'd like to take with mm -hmm. us. So some so, of those yeah. big items and things, how are we going to get them from here to there? And initially I had hoped and thought, well, 
do like a container. You, you get a container, you fill it up, then they store it for you a while, and then they send it to wherever you want it to go. Well, the companies in London who do that, <laughs> they don't go to PEI. Mm, no. <laughs> they might go to Nova Scotia, they might go to Quebec or New Brunswick, but nah, they don't go onto the island. So I'm still, I'm, I'm persistent. I'm still yeah. trying to figure that one out. We do know for sure there is one company that would do it all for Oh, us. Yeah. there's more than finish. one, more actually, than one. Yeah. that would just move it and keep it and then yeah. but that's probably the highest priced option yeah i was gonna say so. that in some areas we do like to penny pinch a bit and yeah. part of it might be because the last time we did this before we had children and it wasn't a full three-bed home we were moving we did it all ourselves mm -hmm. so we know we were capable of that at one time so to to let go of that and and allow a company to do more is is tricky because I still find my brain once in a while going back to yeah. could we swing yeah. it and then like no yeah. no we said we weren't gonna <laughs> put ourselves through that we'll so see. Yeah. yeah I don't know we'll let you it's, know <laughs> it's on the back burner <laughs> yeah <laughs> we'll see and one of the things that I've been really wrestling with and if you uh, know me and are mm. watching any Facebook stuff from me is my piano it's my childhood yeah. piano which my parents um, very graciously kept up and then gave to me when they didn't need it anymore. And it's over a hundred years old. It, there are things that I could complain about it, about it, but there are things I love about it too. So I did make the, the, the decision that, all right, I'm going to try to let it go. First of all, we offered it to the new owners. Do you want to keep it? Well, no, they don't want it, which I don't blame them for. Yeah. And so now I'm trying to give it away for free on like social media and mm. friends. No luck on that so far. Well, a p it's I know, a piano I know. is a big item. It's and if this heavy. is a this is a big upright yeah. grand piano, so yeah. it's, and not everyone plays the piano to the level that you do. So yeah. you have a different appreciation for it. And yeah. it has traveled east and back. Yeah, <laughs> it's already been east and back once. So we yeah. think we doing that again might not be not the sure best thing for the piano. How and, well it'll survive. It yeah. Here. So I t we'll see. I'm kind of of the, well, if nobody takes it, maybe I will take it with yeah. me. Or I might just have to pay somebody to, to dispose of it. And then we'll see from there. Yeah. So the, the panel is what I'm wrestling with right now. I'll tell you next time maybe what I've decided to do with the piano. Which I can understand where he's at. Because I think I said a few weeks ago that there might be some homemade items that I was willing to part with. But I have to confess, they may have all already landed in a box. <laughs> this is news to me. What what item are we talking about here? Not just one item. I thought maybe I would part with some of my homemade quilts oh. and make room so that I can make more. But I just can't at this point. So they're yeah. packed and coming. Yeah. And yeah. then the last thing for all of us in this house is just finishing school for the year. Yeah. By the time our next video comes, we'll, yeah. we'll be like one day left of school. We did get notifications since last time oh, that we shared. Yeah. We are in Ontario finishing online. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of nice to just have yeah. that said. Yeah. There, yeah. There, it's very controversial, this finishing online yeah. here in Ontario. And as a teacher, I don't feel I can really speak appropriately no, to it. No, but it's just nice to have an answer. Yeah, it's, nice to, it's nice to know where I'm going yeah. rather than wondering every day whether I'm going to have to switch my plans. So yeah. now I can plan right to the end yeah. of the year, yeah. and that, that is nice. And even from our children's perspective as students, yeah. who are both very social and actually quite love going to school they were also relieved to just have an answer so that they too weren't I mean we're doing a lot of asking them to be patient and waiting in life and not having a lot of clear answers for them so anytime that we're able to give them a clear answer on something right now it feels like a relief to them so I think again they were able to just settle in and go okay we know this now and now we will make other plans within continued restrictions to make sure that they have opportunity to say yeah. goodbye to some of their school friends and um, even some of the additional support that our daughters have had at school have contacted us and they are reaching out to make sure that they get to say goodbyes. So I appreciate that people are looking for ways to make sure we get healthy, good closure yeah. for them too. Yeah, yeah. It is, uh, we, yeah we've got yeah. some good people. We do. Yeah. We do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's that's been a lot. And I a think... <laughs> <laughs> it's only going to get to be more from here on out, so maybe we'll we'll wrap it up for now, and okay. we'll save that for later. And... Sounds good. I hope you guys are doing okay. Um, things feel like they're about to rapidly change, and yeah. I don't know. I'm as much as this lockdown and isolation has been difficult. The idea of opening up and figuring out how to do life again 
is a little bit nerve wracking. So for anyone else who's feeling that way, I hear you. I'm with you. I understand. And I just wish you all the ability to just lean into it and and let it happen and try not to push too hard. (laughs) We're with you. (laughs) Be well. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.